As explained, my name is Jim Cutts. I'm Director of Engineering at Sea Truck Bolts out of Brightling Sea in Essex. Um, we like to call ourselves a leading designer and builder of uh, high-speed catamaran uh, vessels. These are made out of advanced FRP composite materials. I'd like to just give you a quick brief overview of what we're talking about today. Uh, a little history of Sea Truck. Uh, the details of the sort of vessel that we actually, or the vessels that we build in our, um, in our portfolio and the standards that we actually meet. Uh, details of the initial brief that we were actually uh, working to, to, uh, to design our first vessels. Uh, details on our 20T, which is our standard multi-purpose catamaran. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about swath vessels. Um, advantages of the uh, FRP materials, um, our patented movable deckhouse structure, and then future developments as we're as uh, Sea Truck are actually moving forward. Just as a brief overview of Sea Truck, we're active mainly in the offshore wind farm industry, but we're also looking to uh, move over into other commercial sectors, and uh, we've also now. Uh, built a small craft, the, uh, the vessel that you see um, on the lowest uh, photograph there, which is our Thor vessel, a twin-hulled offshore raider, is uh, moving us into the military and security sector. The company is relatively new, founded in 2010, and we're located in Brightling Sea in Essex. Uh, to date, we've launched 21 vessels. Out of those 21, two of those are swath, the rest are the either the Thor vessel that you see there or our standard 20T catamaran. And the company at the moment is going through a, an expansion program where literally moving from being a small boat builder to a, a medium-sized company, um, growing our vessel size, growing the vessel numbers that we're pushing through, and, uh, and obviously expanding workforce to, uh, to suit that as well. At the moment, we have 65 personnel or thereabouts. Um, sea Truck itself is a, is a market leader in the high-speed composite vessels for the wind farm industry. We're, uh, as I said, we're only a few years old, but so far we have um, caught up with some of our competitors. Uh, we have a standard 20T vessel, which is a catamaran, our Sea Whisper Swath Craft, um, and both already launched, in service, and proven in the sort of harsh environment of the North Sea. The boats are rugged, robust, cost-effective, and have excellent load-carrying capabilities. That's especially true of the uh, 20T. The 20T actually stands for 20 tonnes of um, disposable load or cargo, however you'd like to, uh, to look at that. As the company moves forward, as I said, we're looking at expanding um, our sort of uh, customer base, moving beyond the wind farm industry. So these uh, 20T and the swath vessels are also looking to be repurposed into other commercial areas and the military sector. Uh, we like to think we stand out from our competitors and the reason that we do that is because of our use of advanced fibre reinforced plastic or AFRP composites which save on weight, enhance, uh, enhance hull efficiency, giving a smoother hydrodynamic shape. This of course has many advantages, one of the main ones is uh, optimising fuel economy. I, I normally don't like having slides with lots of uh, text in there. I'd like to uh, sort, of, um, um, sort of discuss the things as we move forward, but there is such a lot of information. I hope you'll forgive all the, uh, all the text that's actually there. Uh, since its foundation in 2010, Sea Truck has continued to develop its range of offshore wind farm vessels, um, including this 20T vessel that we were talking about and our swath. All vessels, all vessels to date have been designed to meet MGM uh, 280 from the MCA and uh, every vessel has also had its structure designed to meet either DNV or BV uh, rules uh, with regard to uh, FRP materials. Um, in 2013, Sea uh, Truck launched the Sea Wind Challenger which was our first fully classed um, 20T vessel. That was to Bureau Veritas rules and the, uh, the class notation that we've got there shows that it's um, effectively a um, full structure machinery 
uh, to suit their wind farm service rules, and that was for a uh, Category 2 up to 60 miles offshore. Uh, since then, we have actually uh, designed, manufactured, and built a vessel full class to MTA Category 1, so up to 150 nautical miles offshore. Um, we have, as I said, all our vessels have uh, been designed to meet MGM 280. Uh, our latest customer wanted to ignore MGM 280 and stick with the old brown code, and so that vessel actually uh, met the old brown code as well. Um, one of the things that Sea Truck are looking to do as we move forward is push the envelope a little bit. I'll, pr I'll go into a couple of those items as we move forward, but of course the two main ones are the 12 passenger rule and the sub 24 metre load line length. Uh, looking to sort of push beyond both of those. The other area we're looking at doing is, um, is actually looking to design a vessel that would actually stay offshore for 12, 12 passengers, but stay offshore for up to 14 days at a time with full accommodation on board. Excuse me. Okay, we, Sea Truck itself, the first vessels that we actually manufactured basically had innovation at its core. The, the company was actually born out of um, frustration um, by the owners of Sea Wind, which we would call our sister company. Sea Wind were operating the vessels out on the North Sea, and they were, when they were actually looking to expand their fleet and look at more vessels, they were struggling to find vessels that would actually be suitable for the purposes. Uh, it seemed that vessels were being offered by other manufacturers that were repurposed uh, work boats that didn't actually meet the requirements for the wind farm service uh, industry. They, um, with the experience that they had in uh, operating the vessels, they saw this gap in the market and decided to, s to set up their own company, Sea Truck, to design and manufacture vessels specifically to suit the wind farm industry. The first brief, if you like, for Sea Truck was to create a flexible multi-purpose vessel that was suitable for the requirements of the wind farm in industry, but offering a stable platform, a higher payload capability than competitors, a large fuel carrying capability, and to carry the 12 technicians in relative comfort, um, and also at the same time to carry some sort of deck cargo. The Sea Truck 20T was born, and uh, the choice of these resin infused composites over the aluminium was, a, was an easy first decision. With regard to innovations, um, Sea Truck designed and developed um, the, the vessel to try and stay ahead of the competition. Um, the standard 20T is capable of uh, operating with a single person. So if there's ever you know, a minimum crew of two, if there's a man overboard situation, we have a remote operating um, station which can be um, taken from the wheelhouse. The, uh, captain of the vessel, the, the operator of the vessel can actually go to the side of the vessel, operate the craft purely um, from this remote station and uh, effectively sort of come alongside and recover any um, personnel in the water. The big issue of course for the wind farm in industry was to carry cargo so we looked at uh, a 20 tonnes payload capability. Um, refueling is a big issue on the wind farm so we were looking at uh, large fuel capabilities. We uh, we take 16,000 of litres of fuel on the 20T. Um, and then be able to utilise the vessel in a different number of roles. Obviously carrying 12 technicians out to the wind farm is the most important role, the, the primary um, uh, requirement. Uh, but um, there are also requirements when uh, generators and other equipment needs to be carried out or back from the wind farm as well. So, we developed this movable wheelhouse system which allowed you to reposition the, the wheelhouse and the deck house uh, on the vessel itself. So it uh, and, um, essentially had a, um, a three pod system where we have a wheelhouse, a passenger pod and a galley pod at the back end. Those three are all bolted together. The passenger pod can come away, the wheelhouse and the galley pod can move close together and be close coupled and that uh, wheelhouse or deck house structure can, can then be moved around the, the deck of the vessel itself, creating either a, a large fore deck for cargo or a large aft deck for cargo. 
Uh, the other um, issue that we were trying to do with regard to using composites is to make a very lightweight vessel so that we could uh, essentially have a smaller um, prime mover and become more fuel efficient than competitors as well. And then of course this other issue was to carry the technicians in a relatively nice comfortable environment. Um, and our tagline was born, we were looking to offer a safer, better, faster, more cost effective vessel. Now this is where the technology fails me, so uh, please just give me one second while I find the video. Here we go. Ah. We don't have sound, but uh, we saw a very clear gap in the market, having had experience working on the Gulf of Sands, that um, there was a real need for charter boat owners to have the most flexible boat that they could get. And as a naval architect, it was fantastic to be able to go out to an offshore wind farm and understand what makes these boats tick. And we took that knowledge, and I think there were really four key things we were looking for. The first one being safety. So um, we looked at, at the different vessels, and uh, we came up with the Seaswap vessel, who actually have this excellent uh, manual board system, where you have the vector system. So that means the skipper don't have to stay in the wheelhouse and actually steer the vessel to the castle seat, he can actually go outside the vessel and then actually control the vessels from outside at the same time where he actually pick up the castle seat. And that's a brilliant system, so that was one of the main factors to, uh, to buy the vessels actually. The boats have to operate with two people aboard at times. And it struck me that if someone went into the water, there would be one person left on the boat. How would that person get the other person out of the water? And that led us to develop uh, and use water jets and ended up choosing a Rolls Royce reason we chose Rolls-Royce was their vector stick control system. The skipper could focus on the, all the other things he has to be doing, worrying about the crew getting off between the boat and the transition piece, talking to the marine coordinator on the radio, working out where he's going next. It becomes second nature to control this boat. The jets operate via two levers. Uh, one is your throttle and the other one basically is your, is your tiller. You flick a switch and the throttle then becomes uh, a joystick and the boat will go wherever you put it. So if you want to go sideways, you put it to the side you want to go, and she goes. We ended up choosing composites really for, for several reasons. One is it dries out weight, but the other thing it gives us is a very tough structure. It's a work boat. We have to come up against steel structures, and it's got to be tough. And resin infusion, which is the method we chose over aluminium, gives us the lightest, toughest, most cost-effective material probably five knots faster than our aluminium competitor. And significantly, we use about half the horsepower of an aluminium boat. It makes it a much more cost-effective boat. A lot of the vessels you see out there are very big engines, and they burn a lot of fuel every day, where we come out, actually. And if you've calculated up to 400 pounds a day, we can say, compared to a normal uh, aluminium vessel, we don't have to go in and refuel as often as the other vessels. We have actually recognized that we can refuel twice as many generators as we were used to do with our other vessels. So that's a big advantage for us and as well our customer. She's got so much power that none of the tides will cause her a problem. All round, she's probably the best equipped and power to weight ratio boat that there is. We go out faster, we go in faster, we move between the foundation faster. Uh, so you save an hour in the day and that means that you can work an extra hour that day. And again, to the customer, when we looked at the competition, um, working on the Gunfleet Sands, the reason we got the opportunity to, to come in was none of the vessels on that site could do the job that we ended up doing, which was to carry a three-ton generator. And it seemed to me that there was a gap in the market, specifically for charter boat owners. These are people who are going to buy a boat, one day it's going to do a particular job, and then they'll need to move to another client to do another job. And it was really important that we gave them a vessel that could meet all those needs, that was as flexible as possible and that could be as competitive as possible. Well, the sea track is so versatile. Um, it's, it's a working boat, and 
one day you can carry a huge amount of bulky and heavy gear in one configuration. You can come back in a couple of hours work, you can change the boat so the next day you can take out 12 engineers ready to go up the towers um, with all their gear in perfect safety and comfort. The modules that we put on the back can be for fueling, we can carry a huge amount of fuel or some days you require to, to have the, the four deck clear so that we can use the cranes that all fit into the wind farm. Um, you can offload and load in various places, it, it's just such a versatile boat. You never know what's around the corner, so you can say uh, one contract we have one task uh, and another contract we have another task. So actually with this uh, flexible system we can rebuild the boat within hours, so instead of the contract to have Very to run in, two boats, they can actually use our boats for a different purpose from day to day. So one day we can go out with passengers, the day after, if it needs for survey, we can actually go out and do the survey the day after. In that way, we are more cost effective for the customer. I think for the charter boat skipper, there is one choice now. Is it with a boat that do just one job, maybe carry two or three tons? Or is it with a boat that can do a whole number of jobs, carrying some 20 tons? and actually saving the client £400 a day. So for similar money to the aluminium single roll competitor, we can save the client money as well as offer a much better service, a much more cost effective service. Okay, a little bit salesy, so uh, <laughs> please <laughs> accept my apologies with regard to that. But um, gives a good idea of the of the actual vessel that we um, that we manufacture, and gave a good indication of the um, of the uh, movable wheelhouse uh, um, feature that we actually uh, introduced. Okay, the, the, the big one, of course, is with regard to composites. Um, I've been in shipbuilding all my life, about 30 years or so, and 15 years of that has actually been uh, in companies that manufacture vessels out of composites. There's, uh, there's always going to be the uh, pros and cons. Um, uh, sea truck, myself and Sea truck actually believe that uh, composites are definitely the future. Um, I don't know what people's background are, so uh, forgive me if I'm going to go over familiar ground, but effectively the uh, sort of advantages of, uh, of composites. Um, as you may or may not be aware, composites are fibres in a uh, resin matrix. Uh, resins come in different uh, types and um, materials, polyester, vinyl ester, epoxy. Fibres come in many different versions of uh, glass fibre, we all know, aramids or Kevlar and carbon. Uh, each product can come in a ver variety of different uh, formats, either a, a, a mat um, where there's no particular weave to the, uh, to the product, or you can have woven rovings at plus minus 90 degrees, plus or minus 45 degrees, or single direction, unidirectional. Cores can be foam, honeycomb, balsa wood, many, many different uh, products. What that actually does is allow you to tailor any material that you're trying to design to suit the uh, end characteristics that you're looking for. Uh, the materials are all established. Uh, sea truck only uses um, materials that are approved, have type approvals by classification societies, DNV, LR or uh, Bureau Veritas. Each type of product, whether it be the resin or the, uh, the fibre, has its own individual characteristics, but you can see by the use of different materials, different layups, different uh, products, you can get an infinite number of combinations. What that actually does is it allows you to, to, to tailor the design of the product that you're looking for to meet those final characteristics. If you need something robust and impact resistant, you can make that. If you need it extremely lightweight, there's a way of doing that. If you need flexibility or stiffness, there's uh, materials and lay layups that you can actually use to actually uh, meet those requirements as well. Um, uh, there's a couple of um, very nice tables on there that give a good idea of some of the advantages that composites bring to the table. If a steel structure is, uh, you know, the sort of baseline 100%, you can see there with an e-glass foam sandwich, we're looking at approximately sort of 40 to 50% of the weight of a steel structure. 
Uh, if we're looking at carbon uh, fibres with a foam sandwich core, you're looking at between sort of 30, 35, 37 percent of the weight of a steel structure. Uh, the table on the right hand side there actually shows a little um, uh, detail of the uh, different uh, varieties or the, or the different characteristics you can get. The first one there which is a T showing the, the, the big thick black line if you like are two layers of uh, single skin uh, glass fibre uh, and it gives you the relative sort of strength and stiffness and weight there as the baseline. You then look at adding a sandwich core, a, a foam core, um, uh, twice T, two times T, you're looking at relative stiffness of 700% and uh, strength of 350% there. Go up to uh, four times T, your relative stiffness 3,700 and strength 925. What that actually does is it allows us to tailor any sort of uh, structure that's actually required to meet the final characteristic. Um, a very, very flexible system of manufacturing. Thank you very much. Doesn't time fly when you're having fun? Okay, um, as I've said before, um, the structure that we actually manufacture is all uh, is, is, is designed to meet the, the requirements. What we're looking at here is uh, some um, finite element results of uh, our swath vessel. Effectively, this structure is designed to meet a composite manufacture, i.e. we're not just building a steel or an aluminium structure made out of composites. You actually design the composite to suit the end characteristic that you want. So you may see a sandwich structure that doesn't have all the stiffness that you would expect to see on a steel or an aluminium bulkhead. Um, materials construction is designed to meet classification rules. As I've said before, we meet uh, DNV and Bureau Veritas. Um, Actually, the structure we've actually got now meets both of those um, uh, classification rules. We choose to go with Bureau Veritas under full class purely because of um, uh, the relationship we've built up with those people as we move forward. Again, this is the swath. It shows the, uh, the bulkheads throughout the structure itself there, and the photograph in the bottom right-hand corner there actually shows the vessel under construction. Um, materials designed from first principles. When you actually design... Uh, structures to classification societies with composites, you have to prove that you've actually um, met, met, met all the um, uh, factors of safety and uh, requirements of the classification rules. That then has to be proven by testing of the product itself. So you design it, you get it approved, you test to ensure that your product is actually meeting the minimum standards that you've actually designed. We use resin vacuum infusion. Um, I, I, I'm assuming you all know, but if not, effectively, you lay up your laminate dry, you put a large bag over it, you suck, it, suck the air out under vacuum, and that vacuum pulls resin in that's actually uh, pre-mixed to wet the entire structure out. That has some great advantages over the old techniques of hand laminating, where a guy would turn up with his cloth and his bucket of resin and his little roller and he'd roll away effectively using resin infusion, once you've got your design of your product finalised and proven through testing, classification societies, the shipyard itself, all industry recognise that that is then a repeatable process. Put the same amount of, put the same resin in, put the same um, uh, base materials in there, a vacuum is a vacuum is a vacuum. So once you've pulled it through, effectively your resin content, your fibre to resin ratio is repeatable. It's the same every single time. The material thickness is exactly the same and your material characteristics at the end of the day are exactly the same. So you've got a repeatable process time and time again. Okay, I'm not going through that. <laughs> the big issue, of course, that everybody um, comes up with with regards to composites is the combustible word. Uh, compared to steel and aluminium, FRP is considered combustible, where steel and aluminium are non-combustible. Okay, this is the big one. Um, th there's no denying that that's the case. Uh, there, are, there is research going on at the moment, of course, to look for non-combustible uh, product, uh, FRP products. Whether that's using special resins uh, or other products uh, remains to be seen. There are some low flame spread products at the moment, phenolic resins do that job quite well, but they, they have some issues with regard to strength, etc. So, in a, in, a, 
in an effort to show everybody, of course, that composites are almost as safe as everything else. Um, we found a NATO um, uh, paper, a white paper presented to NATO, effectively a very interesting paper that's gone through all the, um, the issues with regard to uh, composite materials and what their attitudes are. The, the big thing, I think, with regard to this is the second point up from the bottom. I won't go through everything. It's fallacious logic not to use composites because they can burn, just as it's fallacious logic not to use steel for structures in ships because steel sinks. It's, it's the same sort of approach. Effectively, composites are recognised as being combustible, so you must do something to composites to, um, to prevent a spread or a start of a fire. Um, and, in fact, SOLAS have recognised such a thing at the moment, as well as the new uh, 17 uh, regulation, which effectively doesn't necessarily allow composites or, or state that composites are fine. What it does actually state is that you have to... It, it, it allows alternative designs um, so long as you can prove that that alternative design um, is as safe as potentially uh, a, a steel or an aluminium structure. Uh, I would love to wind up, yes. I've still got about eight slides left, but I'll, uh, I'll just nip through them very, very quickly because the whole idea of the, of the uh, presentation was for innovations. We've covered a few little bits of innovations, but not, not very many. Um, effectively, our movable deck house structure that we were talking about, this is a big innovation with regard to the sea truck vessels, and it allows the craft to be utilised in many different ways. This passenger pod can be removed, and the, uh, the remaining deck house structure moved around the, um, the vessel itself. If you look at the big photograph there, on the deck of the vessel you can see a number of white circles. Those are tie-down points which are used to uh, load cargo and to strap cargo down, but they're the same points that are used to bolt that structure down, that deck house structure, as you move the structure forward and aft. The big issue, of course, is that there's just a, an umbilical cord between the engine rooms and the wheelhouse itself where all your services pass through. Uh, Swath, I was going to tell you a lovely story about Swath and show you another lovely video, but hey ho. Um, okay, we're now at Sea Truck and now moving forward and looking at hybrid vessels. The one that really um, appeals to us at the moment is uh, a hybrid Swath. The reason for that is that our new design allows for a retrofit of hybrid uh, uh, drive technology. Um, the next system, uh, using resin-infused composites, um, as you have a reservoir of pre-mixed resin and activator, as that's actually pulled through and wets the uh, product out, you always end up with a huge wastage, uh, a big reservoir still full of activated resin that's actually thrown away. We're looking now at developing a peristaltic pump system, which effectively meters out the right amount of uh, resin to activator, goes through a mixing tube as it enters the, uh, the um, uh, vacuum infusion process. So effectively, at the end of the process, you've still got your resin and activator unmixed, so it, uh, it cuts down on a lot of wastage. Uh, future developments, basically going bigger and, um, and looking at pushing the envelope with regard to UK and German flag authorities with regard to the 12-passenger rule and effectively the 24 metre load line length rule um, so that we can look at vessels which would carry more than 12 packs out to a wind farm on a daily basis or uh, potentially a larger vessel that would carry 12 passengers for prolonged periods, i.e. 14 days offshore. Uh, we also are moving our standard 20T vessels into a military market. Thank you very much. <laughs>